Gucci and never reconnect with the UFO guy Juan Carlos interviewed at O'Hare. We tried to find this guy and uh, we even left messages with his mother and grandmother somewhere in Texas, but we could never find him. Take a look at Juan Carlos' conversation with the UFO guy. Oh, what do you think? Do you believe in UFOs? Oh, oh, yeah, yes, sir. Definitely. They're out there, man. I've seen them. I've been out there in Aurora, Texas. They got them. What the fuck? Come on. With all due respect, sire, each of those gummies contains 15 milligrams of THC. And those joints are ginormous. I'm honestly quite surprised that you're not belly up at the moment. <sighs> Cindy, I promise you I'll be fine. Now please cut back on what I was watching. They could be made of anything extraterrestrial. <laughs> extraterrestrial, you mean? That, the extraterrestrial. Ec extraterrestrial. Extraterrestrial. There you go. Keep seven. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the One Odd Day Podcast. I invite you to pull up a chair, come join the cipher, light your joints. My name is M.A. Nassif. Let's try to glitch the matrix and make sense of the senseless. Cindy, give me something on the Chicago O'Hare Airport UFO incident. November the 7th, 2006. Chicago O'Hare Airport. A UFO was seen hovering over the airport terminal. Credible witnesses include 12 Delta Airlines employees, the pilot, and several mechanics. The Federal Aviation Administration initially denied that the incident even occurred until a FOIA was filed by the Chicago Tribune. You know, I think one of the worst things was the way that the media handled it. The way mainstream media handled this, it was disgusting. You know, they, they made a mockery of it when there was so much compelling evidence. Now, here we are years later, we see that the FAA did receive a phone call from the director at Delta. The director at Delta told them, hey, I had a crew, a flight crew, which included a captain, which included a mechanic, which included uh, the, the flight attendants. They all saw a UFO hovering over the airport. You know, and, and then the, then the, it shot off into the sky so fast that it actually broke through the clouds and left a hole in the clouds, which, you know, later the FAA, even with the 12 witnesses um, and United flight crew and everything, you know, the, the FAA still declared that, hey, we'll just classify this as a weather phenomenon. A fucking weather phenomenon. Come on. You speak with such conviction, sire. I can only imagine that you've given this subject a great deal of your time. You know, it's crazy to me how there's people out there who don't believe in aliens or extraterrestrial intelligent life forms. That that seems so narrow minded to me to think that, yo, you could feel like we're alone in this entire galaxy with all the planets that are out there all the galaxies you feel that we're the only intelligent life form just us surely you must believe that society is becoming more open-minded as opposed to prior generations i think as a society we're coming to the point where you have like three different energies out there you have the energy of hey i don't believe in ufos i don't believe in extraterrestrial life form i believe we're the only things here and i think a lot of those school of thoughts are rooted deeply um, within religious reasons. I think you have the narrative out there of, hey, I understand that the government is hiding this information from us, but I don't have the time to sit here and tinker with this idea of UFOs and extraterrestrial. I'm too busy right now. Pardon the interruption, sire, but you have an incoming call from Twin. Shall I connect the call? Yeah, go ahead and put them through. Hey, what's good? Yo, oh, what's up, bro? Yeah, chilling. Everything good? I'm good, man. I was just vibing, um, doing a little bit of smoking, watching this UFO doc. Um, it's about this UFO that was hovering over the Chicago airport. Ain't no such thing as no UFO. Hold on, wait, Twin. <laughs> you don't believe in UFOs? Nah, I don't believe in you. Man, that's a myth. Ain't no such thing as no UFO. If that the case, you got to go with, you believe in mermaids, Bigfoot? No, 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 that's not fair. You can't compare the two things. The 
The government doesn't have top secret files on mermaids. It doesn't have top secret files on Bigfoot. But they do have top secret files on UFOs. They have top secret files on extraterrestrial intelligence. I go with facts. And I, I, and I go with, like, let's see, like, reality. And to me, that's not reality. That's just my opinion. All right, but you know, you are aware that there's, like, thousands and thousands of people that have witnessed them, right? And you are aware that a lot of them are like high ranking government officials and people that worked in like the Navy and people that we once entrusted with like high responsibilities. You are aware of this, right? Nah. I don't believe in it. I mean, I never had no homeboy that got abducted. I never had family members that got abducted. I never know nobody. And I've been on earth 44 years and I've never know. I've heard of anybody that I and Twine where it got abducted. Okay, they and everybody got the same story, and I wonder why is that? Like on some real shit, everybody say, "Oh, they seen a UFO," and then all of a sudden it disappears. I mean, what? Well, 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 why is it disappearing? Like, what is it scared of human beings? But then if they got so much power, then that, if anything, we should be submissive. Twin, you have X. Ex- United States presidents that have seen UFOs. Jimmy Carter in the 60s. Um, Ronald Reagan in the 70s. I think it was Ronald Reagan. Um, he was in Air Force One and a UFO chased him down. Like, these are credible people. Okay. That's so they say. So they say, like I said, everybody going to have the same story. But like I say, if you're dealing with facts, put it this way. It ain't going to stand up in court. <laughs> Excuse me. So you're saying that the whole thing is a hoax. You're saying the whole thing is fake, that they're making this up. Everybody jumping on the bandwagon with. That's all that is. Everybody just jump on it. Oh, this is a myth that's been out a long time ago, but nobody took a picture of a square fold on the side. And then I can go with that. That is what I'm saying. If we're dealing with reality and we're dealing with facts, but no, like I said, they never showed the footage of them by it. Okay, Cindy, do me a favor. Send Twin a link to um, the Arizona Lights incident. With pleasure, sire. Now sending link. Okay, you see it. Yeah, the the unexplained Phoenix light phenomenon. I'm jumping on it right now. I'm, I'm looking at it right now. A big light. Twin, basically what happened here was... Uh, it took place in Arizona. You had thousands of people who saw this. It was a huge spaceship that floated over the entire uh, state. Um, I think later even the mayor was told that he was pressed by like the FBI. He was supposed to make a joke out of it. This whole thing, and you gotta we'll look into that deeper later. But just check this video out right now and tell me what you think. See, there they go. That's some strange. First of all, you don't know what that is up there at nighttime. You know, I think I'm going to try to find someone um, who actually witnessed it firsthand and try to get them on the pod and talk to them a little bit. I think that would be some good footage. Yeah, I, yeah and I want to, can I cross-examine them? Yeah. <laughs> I want to cross-examine them. But I, you know, I'm telling you, you fuck around and you cross-examine some of these motherfuckers and you find out they don't been in mental institutions and all types of shit. <laughs> That their credibility is fucked up. Come on, if that's not a UFO, then what is it? Like, what's causing the sky to light up like that? It's something that generate that light. That what I just seen, something triggered that. Some type of uh, some type of uh, magnetic current, current like like heavy current. Yeah, it's something like fucking like I would say something like kryptonite. <laughs> green green kryptonite. Uh, no, no, that's the Kush. I don't know. That's what I'm just saying. I don't know what it is. I don't know. I just, I just can't go for that. I can't go for that. I'm just saying, with my upbringing, I can't, I can't vouch for that, man. If I didn't see it, I can't vouch for it. I can't go on somebody else. You're about to listen to the audio from inside of a U.S. Navy fighter jet. This was declassified in 2019. 
but the footage is from 2004. According to the documents, these type of UFOs were spotted twice by the Navy. This is their reaction to what happened when the two pilots witnessed the UFOs. It's rotated. There's a whole fleet of them. Look on the ASA. My gosh. They're all going against the wind. The wind's 120 knots to the west. Oh, all thing, dude. Once the videos were released, the Navy pilot, Commander David Fravor, had this to say about what he witnessed. As we both looked out the right side of our airplane, we saw a disturbance in the water and a white object, oblong, pointing north. This was extremely abrupt, like a ping pong ball bouncing off a wall. The ability to hover over the water and then start a vertical climb from basically zero up towards about 12,000 feet and then accelerate in less than two seconds and disappear is mm -hmm. something I had never seen in my life. Okay, I know you personally, so I know that, you know, you're a man of faith. Um, do you feel like the role that Christianity plays within your life affects your perspective as far as your belief in UFOs? And not really Christian. I just go by the Bible, or not even the Bible. You go by the Quran or whatever, and it don't say nothing about UFOs in there. So I'm quite sure... Why would they leave that out if it exists and they talked about everything else? Twin, if I may. Some Bible scholars have actually as of recent decided that the Bible may surprisingly have some references to extraterrestrial visits. But does it say like if they actually seen a UFO? Not exactly. In Ezekiel 1, it reads as follows. I looked, and I saw a windstorm coming out of the north, an immense cloud with flashing lightning and surrounded by brilliant light. The center of the fire looked like glowing metal, and in the fire was what looked like four living creatures. In appearance their form was human. Ezekiel goes on to further describing the experience. I saw a wheel on the ground beside each creature. Their rims were high and dorsum, and all four rims were full of eyes all around. Spread out above the heads of the living creatures was what looked something like a vault, sparkling like crystal, and awesome. You know, I believe that um, extraterrestrial intelligence helped not only shape our culture and our civilization and our technology, but us on a molecular level. I believe on the science of it. You know, you look at our DNA, we have that missing link or whatever, that missing link. I believe that missing link is like, not from here. I don't know, man. I just, I just, I can't stand on it, man. I can't stand on it. Like I said, that's just my opinion, and that's probably a million more people with the same opinion I got. Just that they want to lace it up and make it seem like, oh, no, it's, it's, it's a scientific fact. Nah, that's not no scientific fact. That's just your opinion. I believe that not only do they exist, but they operate within our world. You know, I believe that they're here right now. I believe that they're probably listening to this podcast. Wow. I don't know, man. That's crazy. <laughs> That's crazy. Yeah, man. <laughs> All right, bro. I'm going to have um, Cindy send you over some more footage, um, shoot you some links, and get back to you in a bit with your opinion on um, some of the other UFO sightings and stuff. Yeah, bring me that footage. Bring me that footage. I'm ready for it. Hey, but check it, right? I'm going to go make a move. Uh, I'm going to hit you up later, all right? All right, bro. You ready to know? All right. Yo. All right, one. Sire, are you aware of the situation going on in Iran? Yeah, you know, unfortunately, um, I have. Unfortunately, I've been keeping up with the madness. Um, I say unfortunately because, you know, I'm not the biggest fan of war. You know, I know sometimes... These wars get painted as uh, a necessity. You know, we look at it like a necessity of the two lesser evils, but there's a whole other side to it. And there's people that profit off these wars. 
you know for those of you who don't know uh basically trump declared war on iran he ordered an airstrike on iran in the process he killed general uh shaheem qasem salimani apparently he was like second in command within the iranian military uh, that led to now iran's government putting up what they call the red flag of doom uh, they put the red flag of doom over one of the country's most famous mosques it's called the jam quran mosque um but yeah like i said earlier you know i'm, I'm wondering how i wonder how this affects the economy Hmm, where's my beautiful ThoughtBot 3.5 at? You are quite the charmer, your highness. I am at your request. Okay, Cindy, I need to know how much this attack on Iran affected the economy. Let's start with oil. Oil prices jumped to the highest level in more than three months after killing the Iranian military commander. This conflict could easily disrupt global oil supplies. Brent crude was up 3% or $1.96 a barrel, while West Texas Intermediate crude was up $1.52 or 2.5% at $62.70 a barrel. Hey, wait a minute, what the hell? Okay, and give me something on the private military sector. Almost immediately after the drone strike, major American weapons manufacturers and defense contractors saw their stocks surge as Northrop Grumman Corporation stock jumped 5.4%, Aerovironment Incorporated advanced 6.9%, and Lockheed Martin Corporation climbed 3.6%. For those of you who don't know, basically the private military sector, it's a bunch of uh, million dollar corporations who were awarded government contracts uh, they receive a paycheck which is, comes from your tax money and they provide the United States with military services you know some political scientists are saying now that the airstrike was illegal uh, they say it never passed through the proper channels of legislation I need to gather more information but uh, that would be crazy though if he did do that because, you know, he's all this is happening on the heels of his impeachment. You know, supposedly, you know, Nancy Pelosi just has to walk that envelope across to the Senate and he's impeached. And then the process begins to see if he's removed from office. Earlier, I mentioned Ronald Reagan and his experience with UFOs. You know, he had an experience where he was um, on Air Force One and supposedly a UFO was following him or pulled up next to him, uh, whatever the case may be. But he later gave a speech how if there were a universal threat, then we would probably come together as humans. You know, we put put all the flags aside, put uh, religious beliefs aside, uh, nationality. We would come together as human beings and realize that, hey, we're all earthlings. There might be like a species out there that is really different from us. And, you know, they might like us and they might not like us. But um, Reagan spoke of it from the perspective of a threat. And I, and I just know it feels like, you know, with all that's going on, we should listen to that. Um, Cindy, play the clip of Reagan speaking on a universal threat. Former President Ronald Reagan, September 21st, 1987. In our obsession with antagonisms of the moment, we often forget how much unites all the members of humanity. Perhaps we need some outside universal threat to make us recognize this common bound. I occasionally think how quickly our differences worldwide would vanish if we were facing an alien threat from outside this world. And yet, I ask you, is not an alien force already among us? What could be more alien to the universal aspirations of our peoples than war and the threat of war. Yeah, and, and I'm not even the Reagan fan either, by the way. I don't believe in Reaganomics. I don't believe in the whole Reaganomics hoopla that these Republicans are always praising. You know, I believe Ronald Reagan was the face of a campaign that was responsible for dumping a lot of cocaine and guns into some of the worst neighborhoods in America. Now, if you go back and listen to the One Odd Day Christmas episode, you'll hear how Ronald Reagan and that whole Ronald Reagan era flooded over town with drugs, uh, 
flooded Miami with cocaine. But as a ufologist and a space nerd, I am fascinated with some of his speeches. He has one where he admits that he was privileged enough to have been given access to a government facility where he saw future technology in. I just had recently a visit to Goddard Space Center, and there I saw already some of the things that I've been talking about here in general. I saw specific examples that we'll soon be seeing, both in the field of uh, great improvements in health science, but improvements in fabrics and materials developed in outer space that are going to mean great savings of time and uh, money to some of our productive industries and increase their production at the same time that they do all those things. It was really a, a brief trip through Wonderland. Right. Ladies and gentlemen, this concludes our episode. Thank you for joining right. us. As right. always, it's been more than a pleasure to have you. This is the One Odd Day Podcast. I'm your host, M.A. Nassif. Special thanks to my co-host, Cynthia the ThoughtBot 3.5. Special thanks to Twin with the footage. As always, the subjects discussed tonight should not be your gauge as to what this podcast is about. Nothing is off the table. Everything is related. Thank you and God bless. Venice swine flu, I'm sipping lemonade. Uh, Cancer inside, I hate the plate, send my prayers to the kitchen. Who's on more roids, the players or the chicken? Uh, I repeat, who invented AIDS? Why do Nikes cost so much that 20 cents to make? Uh, Made it to the moon, can't make it past hate. And we throw away food, people starve every day. Uh,